Dip, 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 dip. Oh, what a surprise. Mr. Duncan, we can't believe you are here. Yes, it is true. It is Wednesday, and this is Late and Live English. For all those who like surprises, well, here is a big surprise for you because we are here live across YouTube. Yes, it's another chance to practice your listening skills because we are here once more. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Well, are you happy? I really hope so. Yes, we are here. I hope you like surprises because this is a really big surprise. You may have noticed that things look a little different at the moment because Christmas is on the way. Next week, we will all be celebrating Christmas. Well, almost all of us, even for those who don't follow Christmas usually. I encourage you to have a good time next Tuesday. And of course, we are here live. I think we will be here for one hour. I'm not sure at the moment how long we'll actually be on. But at the moment, it's about one hour. We might we might go on longer. Who knows? Who knows what might happen? So it is Wednesday night and well, we couldn't have a live stream without this person. Yes, you know who is coming next. Here he is. It's Mr. Steve wiping his nose. Oh, you didn't give me any warning, Mr. Duncan. Yes, we're on all the time. Oh, right. I th you said you're going to introduce me. Yeah. And then, hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> and uh, and then I was just going to sort of like, appear like I, know, I thought it was going to be some music. I've got time to prepare. Yeah, no. But no, there I was sitting in there, no. biting my nails. I put you straight in the deep end. Well, straight. Ah, it's revenge, you see, revenge. Why? Revenge, because I did the unmentionable, unpardonable thing. I, uh, yes, and now you're mentioning it again. Oh. Just just don't mention it. Not going yes. anywhere near the hat. No, don't, nowhere near the hat. Don't go near the hat. So just to show that there are no hard feelings between myself and Steve, tonight I have actually given Steve his own camera. Look at, look at that. Look, Steve tonight has his, ho his own camera. That's it. You have to you have to make sure you stay on <laughs> stay on I'll the camera. Again. I'll try it again. That's it. We didn't rehearse that bit, Mr. Duncan. We haven't rehearsed any I've of got this. My own. Will you get off? You're you're in my, you're in my shot, Mr. Duncan. Even I'm on the camera. You have to go into the wings. The star <laughs> has to shine. <laughs> oh, we had a bit of a busy. Which camera is it now, Mr. Duncan? I don't know which one I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm all confused. There's cameras everywhere. It's just your camera. This is one hell of a studio. This is like the BBC. <laughs> Without the talent. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking into this camera until you tell me otherwise, Mr. Duncan. OK. We had quite a day yesterday, did we not? We did. Quite a day. We did. We went to see it was an an the annual gathering of the of, of, of my family. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> Mr. Duncan comes along. Uh, they're speaking to us now, you know, for many years they didn't. But yeah, everything's all right now. And am I still on that camera, by the way? Yes. OK. And <laughs> and uh, well, we went decided to go to Stratford upon Avon, which is only about 65 miles away. The birthplace of William Shakespeare. Yes. And uh, we decided to go there to this restaurant, have a Christmas meal. But the weather was atrocious, atrocious, horrible weather. If you say atrocious weather, you mean it's very bad, horrible weather. It rained all the way there and it rained even worse on the way back. And it took us two and a half hours to come back because there was so much traffic on the motorway from everybody out Christmas shopping. Um, 
60, 70 miles, 100 <laughs> kilometres, that's all it was. Took us two and a half hours. This is fascinating, well, by the well, way. Well, you're, you're telling me to carry on, Mr. This, Duncan. This is, this is so fascinating. But the, we the, the weather was... The weather was terrible coming back. It was awful. Which camera is it now? Oh, still this one. Well, I'm looking okay. over there. So <laughs> the, if I'm looking over there, it's that one. Can you, can you see that thing with the hole in the front? Do I need to shout at that microphone at the you same you time? Don't, you don't need to shout at anything. Just just tell us about yesterday. <laughs> well, it was there were nine of us all together. Uh, my sister, brother-in-law, <laughs> uh, their three children... Um, and uh, I hadn't seen one of the children for a long time. He's about 26, I think, now, something like that. Lives abroad, came back, and it was nice to see him. We had, we had a, I would say, on balance, we've had a lot worse, haven't we, Mr Duncan? Let's I don't know what you way. mean. What do you mean we've had worse? Mm, disasters when we've met up uh, with my family before. The, the worst one was when we all met for a Christmas meal and then two days later we all had food poisoning. Mm, that was about three years ago, wasn't it? Two that, years that ago. That was two years ago and I remember it. And I chose the restaurant. Yes, it was your fault. Uh, and I'd been there lots of times before and it was perfectly all right, but we all got <laughs> food poisoning. So in a way, you see, my sister chose this one. I was hoping to get food poisoning because then I could say, ha-ha, it wasn't just me. You picked that restaurant because we'll never be able to live that down. They'll always think that it was our fault. But it wasn't, it wasn't well, our fault. I'm sure. We just... Well, we didn't cook the meals. I know. How can we re be responsible? It was it was the dreadful pub. What was it called again? The Bell, wasn't it? Well, we better be careful what we say. I did. We did get some compensation. <laughs> uh, we got some free food vouchers yes. as a result of complaining that we that we never spent we never used them because i didn't um, want to go back to the place because i had such bad memories of when you spend a whole night vomiting and having diarrhea for about 12 or 13 hours it it does tend to put you off going to places well my mother was staying here and i thought she was she nearly died I've never seen her so ill. Yes. Anyway, anyway this is let's a, get let's get Christmas cheer. I Christmas was, cheer. See, I was hoping you'd give us a nice story to start off with, not not doom and gloom. But it was, uh, but you know what I'm like. I'm a bit pessimistic. You are all uh, the, all the time, even at Christmas. We, I would say, we had a nice day. If you're <laughs> watching, yeah, we enjoyed it. It was, you know, I would say. Seven out of ten. I'm, I'm so pleased you didn't spit at us this Se year. Seven out of ten, would you say? That's nice. We didn't get any spit spitting this year, so that was nice. Would you go as high as an eight? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as high as eight. No, maybe half that. Hmm. What's half of eight? Well, you were bored. It's not your family, and they don't really talk to you. Do so. you like? Do you like my tinsel? Come on, let's get Christmassy. Here is Steve. He's got his tinsel. I've got my tinsel. Look at that. Look at our lovely... I don't want to share tinsel. Do you like our tinsel? This this could be the photograph for next year's Christmas card. A bit look, itchy. Look, look at the camera. Smile. So there it is. There is next year's Christmas card. So we've, we've got it ready already. Already. Look what I've got here, Mr Duncan. Can I go back to... The, I feel... Can I go back to the other camera? Because you've got a lovely view in your, on your other camera. OK, then. We're on the other camera now. We're on the main camera. Here we go. Yeah. And it's snowing outside. It isn't. It isn't. It's all a trick. Why Why do you keep drawing attention to these things? Don't worry about the background. Just worry about what we're doing tonight. And, of course, we have the live chat. Who was first on the live chat, I wonder? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's go back to the beginning of tonight's live stream and we will have a look. It looks as if... Oh, Matrix was first. Congratulations to Matrix. You are first on the live chat. Oh, well done. Matrix Tricks 2018. Yes, Matrix, well done. Thank you very much for your name and your Roman numerals as well. Yes. Very, cl very clever. Frederica was very quick, was very close. Very close, but not, not quick <clears throat> enough. Not quick enough. You've got to have a very fast finger. How fast is your finger, Steve? Do you have a fast finger? I, on the trigger, yes. Yes. If I need to suddenly draw a gun and shoot. So you would say that you are very good at fingering. Trigger happy. Good. Well, that, Mr Duncan. Well done. Look, it's very cold outside. OK. 
we've had some very cold weather and I'm having to my lips have become very chapped yeah. it is winter chapped lips that means when your lips get all slightly dry and uh, sore they crack they crack due to the, the cold biting winds yes and uh, you normally have to put something called lipsol or, or some ointment on your lips yes. I use this so this is like they, they call it balm Lip it's a, balm. It's a kind of balm. Lip so it, balm. It, it helps your lips to to heal during the the cold winter weather. I use this. It's excellent. Can I put <laughs> it? You've got another camera. Can we make full use? Well, well, first of all, can I say a big thank you to four people who have made lovely donations on the PayPal account. So let's have a look. First of all, thanks a lot to Sujin, Eric. Lilia, that that is Lilia who sent the uh, lovely video two ah. weeks ago, and also to Stefan or Stephanie. So thank you very much for your lovely mm. donations. And if you would like to make a donation, you are more than welcome to. The time for my live stream is every Sunday from two p.m. UK time, and of course you can make a donation at the address that is coming across the screen right now and it is yes PayPal it is very easy to do so don't worry about it it is very simple to do so this is what Steve bought to to help his lips here it is now I will put it on the screen for Steve there we go how's that Lovely. Wow. Listex. That, that's fascinating, isn't it? Look, so there it is. It's only a small chew, but it's very powerful. So this is what Steve puts on his sore lips. It gives instant relief and heals, and I put it on at night. So if you get dry um, lips, sore lips due to cold winds, that is brilliant. <laughs> it's almost like we're selling this. I wonder who makes it. I'd love to know who makes it. Let's have a look on the back, shall we, Mr. Duncan? It's, shall we see who makes Blistex? It's taken me 10 minutes to get this to hold the focus. Uh, OK, have a look, Steve. Have a look who makes it. Go on, then. This is fascinating. Um, oh. Now, now, earlier, Steve said that he had some really exciting stuff to show us. I didn't think he was going to show us his lip balm. Oh, the company it's this Blistex make it. There's only there's the company it's called Blistex. <laughs> okay, this so, is so uh, you know. Sorry, uh, we're, we're you we're using some of the best technology in the world, and you're talking about your cracked lips. Well, I'm using words, Pl cracked, blistered lips. Yes, and blistered. Chapped. I've never heard anyone say blistered lips. Chapped lips. Yes, chapped. C H A double -P, P E D. <laughs> would you say? Do you have a chap on your lips? <laughs> <laughs> chap being another word for a man. Uh, it's double P though, isn't it? E D C H A double P E D. I don't know. You're telling me. Come on, Steve. You're tell the me. English teacher. I know, but you're bringing this up. Right, that's it. I'm going. No, I'm only joking. Promises. I'm only joking. Okay. Are we? What are we doing tonight? Christmas cards. Yes, because Christmas is on the way. Next Tuesday, Christmas is here. But first of all. On Sunday, we were putting up the Christmas decorations and we put the Christmas tree up and I did make a little bit of a mess of the Christmas tree. So here it is. Here is the Christmas tree from last Sunday. And as you can see, this is what it looks like now. I haven't actually changed it. So this is actually how it looked on Sunday when I, when I threw everything onto the tree. And I think it looks quite nice, actually. So I've decided to keep it like that. So it's, what do you think, Steve? Well, the lights <laughs> don't look very good, Mr. Duncan. So I like the way Steve is yawning. The lights don't look very... I'm it's 10 o'clock at night, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Do you know, I'm so tired because I didn't sleep very well last night. Why, were, you, were you tossing last night? It was because of all that driving. I, I'm Probably four and a half hours I was driving yesterday in yes. torrential rain. And I was so tired, I didn't. I woke up in the middle of the night with things on my mind. Do you know how sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you've got worries and concerns on your mind um, and you wake up and you can't get back to sleep. Yes. So and it's yeah, very annoying. I woke up and Mr. Steve was was turning and tossing and then I asked I asked him what's wrong and he says I've got car lag. And I said car lag. 
What do you mean, car lag? He says, well, I've been all the way to Stratford or Avon and all the way back here. And because of the time difference, I've got car lag. So I think that's the reason why Steve had difficulty sleeping last night because of the journey that all, all of those many, many, many miles all the way to Stratford up on Avon and then back here to Much Wenlock. So I think you, you might be suffering from car lag. What a load of rubbish. There's no such thing, Mr Duncan. I was just the sheer effort to concentrate to keep us safe. OK. For those, all that length of time in the pouring rain, it was dark, windy, all that traffic around. I was exhausted. And then I woke up um, with things on my mind about work, this, that and the other. Do you know, do you ever get that? Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night with things on your mind and... and you go to bed calm, perfectly all right, and then you just wake up and you can't get back to sleep again. It's so annoying. <laughs> I'm thinking of taking uh, a large swig of alcohol. Really? Now, well, I've tried that before and you still wake up. I don't think alcohol is good because no. I think it can actually make you more restless. I think so. And it makes you hot. By the way, if you'd like to send me an email, you are more than welcome to. Here's the email address. Lots of people have been asking for my email address. So I will put it on the screen right now. There it is going underneath us. Can you see it? So if you want to write to me, that is the email address. I know one thing, this tinsel around my neck is really itching. And I bet you're getting hot. I'm getting very hot under all this tinsel. So we've got some Christmas cards to show today. Yes. Also some other things as well. Steve has a mixture of things to show, including something very unusual, which which I wasn't expecting to see tonight on the live stream. So I don't know why he's brought that, but we will have a look at that a little bit later on. I'm a little unpredictable, as you know, Mr Duncan. We had something absolutely lovely to eat tonight we had something to eat a lovely spicy samosa in fact we had four samosas we had two each and they weren't meat were they they weren't meat they were vegetarian vegetable samosas mm. uh indian dish yes um well, I could be wrong. It may be <laughs> Pakistani. I don't know. Didn't you say Maybe that was all over the Indian subcontinent, probably. Didn't you say this the other week? <laughs> Made of pastry wrapped up with whatever you want inside that's spicy and then you fry them. Uh, and we love them, don't we? They are absolutely gorgeous. We love samosas. But we have them with some, some three bean salad and also baked beans. The only problem is, Steve, sometimes they give me very bad very bad indigestion it's the spice i think it is it's very spicy food well the, the thing is you we have them mm -hmm. with hummus or hummus hummus it's which like is moroccan yes. uh, made of chickpeas chickpeas and garlic <gasps> and garlic which is a very unusual combination so we're mixing indian food with Moroccan food mm -hmm. and three bean salad is probably French or continental, I would say. It's not yes. something that I grew up with. It might actually be Greek or Italian. It could be Greek or Italian. It's certainly certainly European. Mm. So we're mixing all sorts of cultures in one dish. And I remember years ago having samosas and then a friend said to me, oh, have you ever tried them with hummus or humus? Which it, it it's um, it's like a, a dip. Would you call it a dip? It's made well, it of is. Peas. It is. A, it is a dip. You you dip things into it, but also you can put it on salads and have it with spicy food. Pita, pita bread. People have it with pita bread. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Making me feel hungry again. But it goes very well with samosas, mm. uh, and I don't know why, but it just does. Uh, I was slightly concerned because. These were bought, we're going to say the name, we will say the name of the supermarket that we bought them from. OK. Because I, we've been buying samosas for 30 years from Sainsbury's. Hmm. And uh, they're the th best. Let's just mention that Sainsbury's is one of the big shopping chains because in some countries, Sainsbury's doesn't exist. Exactly. So Sain Sainsbury's is a big shopping outlet 
uh, mainly supermarket food, mm. things like sort of canned food, things like that. So but it's, it's a supermarket. It's one of the largest in the country. And uh, they haven't changed the recipe for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I tried them in all the different supermarkets. And I prefer the ones at Sainsbury's because they're very close to authentic uh, Indian sweet shop mm. samosas. But they changed the recipe. <gasps> really? Mr. Duncan, I went and, and they would look totally different. Yeah. And I thought... If they've changed the recipe, are they going to taste the same? Oh my the goodness. answer is, what? they're, if anything, even better. Then they're really nice. I know, because before they used to break up. They were very soft and you'd take them out of the packet and they'd broken in half. And they've managed to, to um, come up with a recipe for the pastry, which is much stiffer. <laughs> and doesn't break up. Yes. And uh, well, that was the main problem with the old recipe. Is they were they were they were loaded with fat and grease, and so when you put them in the bag, they would just break up. They would all fall to pieces. But these new ones don't. They they stay very solid and very, they they stay in one piece, so they don't break up. There's so nothing. There's nothing worse than buying food, and then by the time you get home, it's all squashed and broken. Can't. So well done, Sainsburys. On a successful relaunch after 30 years of having the same recipe, uh, we've been coming back for them for 30 years. Probably every week we've been having them. 30 years. 30 years. Uh, beans. There we go. Baked beans is an American dish, isn't it? So we're mixing Indian samosas with American baked beans, Moroccan hummus and uh, continental European three bean salad. Yes, we think that might be Greek. <laughs> Or Greek, but at any rate, that's four different nationalities all on one dish. Mm, amazing. They do go well with baked beans. Very cosmopolitan. <laughs> we should be having it with salad, but that must be incredibly boring. Let's see if people are bored stiff I'm, I'm sure by the, our conversation about samosas. I'm sure the people at Sainsbury's next week will be having a special board meeting before they break up for the Christmas holiday, and they will say... Ladies and gentlemen, all the staff and managers, can I just say a big thank you for improving the recipe of the samosas because Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve on YouTube said that they are very happy with the new samosas that we are now making. We are very happy. They're a bit minty. <laughs> There's too much mint. OK. But, uh, you know, it's only a small point. I can't believe we've just spent the last seven minutes talking about samosas. We could have them on Christmas Day instead of turkey. Ooh, actually, that sounds nice. How Tur about that? We could have turkey samosas. They, they sell chicken ones. Hey, we haven't done the shopping yet. We haven't. We haven't done the supermarket no. shopping. So it's going to be one mad dash at the weekend, running around, trying to get all of the vegetables. And We're, we're not having a turkey this year. We've decided not to. <laughs> We've decided to have chicken instead. And yes, so for all those who thought I was going to say we've gone vegetarian, we haven't. We're still going to have some meat. But instead of turkey, which is rather large, and I always think that the meat of the turkey dries out very it's quickly. It's very dry. It's very dry. So it doesn't keep very well. So if you want to have some of the turkey a couple of days later, the meat goes very dry. Hard and dry. But with chicken, it doesn't. So we've decided to get a very nice chicken this year. Because you, we can still have stuffing, or all, all the vegetables as well. <laughs> I, I, Bread I, sauce I, goes I, well with chicken. I have to have the stuffing. You're being very rude tonight, Mr I'm Duncan. Not, I'm not. There's nothing I rude. You are. I think that's your mind, not mine. And... Um, so we can have everything the same, the same vegetables, everything. We're just going to have chicken, which is a much nicer meat, in my opinion. And uh, what are people saying on the live chat, Mr. Duncan? Let's have a look at the live. Where are you going? Nowhere. You, you, I'm here. You're doing this thing again where you start lying down. I, I knew it was a mistake to make the table bigger because it, it just encourages Steve to to lie down. So let's have a look at the live chat. Yes, it is late and live. We are doing a special one tonight. Uh, we don't normally come on <laughs> nowadays onto the internet on a Wednesday because normally Steve is very busy. But tonight, just tonight we are here. Go back a bit. Let's 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 <laughs> go from where we left off. Here we go. Well, that was right at the beginning. Ah, right. Exactly. 
So I can't go all the way back to the beginning. Okay. It will take us ages. It will take us half an hour. All to get... right. So many people. This is the trouble. We say this every 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 time. We miss uh, a lot of the live chat. Yes. Because we are having to present the show. Um, so it's very difficult for us to to comment on everybody. So let's on. let's have a look who else is here. Afghan, Samuel, Tamir, Diane. Oh, hello, Good. teacher. How are you? Thank you, Diane. Zedn Zenek. Uh, also, Frederica. And, oh, Tatiana. Hello, Tatiana. I haven't seen you for a long time. Pedro is here, also one of the moderators tonight. Afghan. And also we have Sarah, or Sara. Buenas noches. Francisco oh. Manoz is here as well. Very nice. Sarah from Madrid. Um, Pe Pedro asks, Mr. Duncan, did you see my comment about each person sending Merry Christmas? Not Merry Christmas, not Merry. That, that's when you have a wedding, but Merry. So Merry is happy and jolly. Merry Christmas in their native language. Well, the problem with that is Christmas is just around the corner, so I haven't got time to do all of that because that means I would have to sit and edit and go through all of the emails. So unfortunately, it's a little bit too late to do that because on Tuesday, it's Christmas Day. So sadly, I don't have time to, to sort out lots and lots of videos and emails because we are busy preparing for the Christmas holiday. Oh, and have we? It's always so busy, isn't it? If you celebrate Christmas or whatever uh, religious ceremony that you celebrate, <laughs> yes. there's always a lot of preparation and a lot of things to do, a lot of ceremonies and traditions that you have to get ready for. We've got somebody from America watching us. I, I wonder Angela. What, I wonder, Angela Selby. Hello. I wonder, yes, I wonder if Scientologists have, have Christmas. Or, or equivalent Christmas no well do they have well they must have something they must well have a... that's what I mean they'll have they'll have some celebration R.L. Hubbard you know the, the guy that invented maybe maybe it's it's when it's his birthday so is it is it is it Ron L. Hubbard yes so when it's Ron L. Hubbard the guy who invented Scientology's birthday when it's his birthday maybe in Scientology, that's like Christmas. So maybe they, really? they have little space aliens hanging up around them because they believe that we all come from space aliens and that we have the souls of aliens trapped inside us. <laughs> well, it's, it's, no, it's no more unbelievable than, uh, than the most other religions. <laughs> it's just that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a more modern religion. Therefore, we would find it difficult to... Uh, to believe, but probably Christianity was probably hard to believe two thousand years ago. Mm. Uh, who knows? In, in in a thousand years' time, Scientology may be the <laughs> new religion that everybody is. Uh, Scientology. Scientology. Scientology could be, you know. Is that like Scientology, but you have a cup of tea as well? What? Well, what? Well, quite frankly, I know people mock sci Scientology, but. Do they? I mean, it's more believable saying that we come from space aliens, I think, because I, you could believe that, couldn't you? Uh, well, I don't believe it. <laughs> well, you, could, you, can, uh, you can believe that there could be aliens and therefore they visited us and we've come from them. That's more believable than, yes. than a lot of the religions. For, for example, for example what, what, which religion would you say? Well, I'm not going to go into other religions, but they all have their own backstory, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's, they've all got they've all got a, a story that they want you to believe in. Welcome to Mr. And, Steve uh, digging a hole. I'm not digging a hole. I'm just saying all religions have got this story. This, yes, you know that that, that you, they want you to believe in. Yes. Well, what and, I think. Uh, uh, let me surmise. They all sound fantastic. Well, that's it. They all sound like fantasy. But but I think what you're saying, and I understand what you are saying, is the further back the religion goes, the more prominent it is. It gains credibility. So you might say that Scientology is 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 a, is a new religion. Yes. OK, so there you go. That's fair enough. And uh, well, you can imagine 2000 years ago or, or if you're talking about uh, 
Islam a thousand, about a thousand years ago. No, just uh, just stop doing that. Stop leaning. You know, the, the, the pyramids, uh, what, what the Egyptians used to believe in, uh, the Greeks, what, all the different cultures around the world all have their own beliefs, which have been built up over many hundreds or thousands of years. And uh, after a while, it just becomes that's what you believe in. You know, my favourite religion, you know which one it is? I, I, Mormons, I think they're amazing. They're so amazing because they can get married. They can marry lots of people and they normally have about 50 children. And they, they always live in lovely big houses. I don't know why. Why do, why do Mormons always end up with really nice big houses? The only downside is that they do have this habit of riding around on bicycles in clean iron shirts with black ties. What's and, wrong they, with that? and they have a habit of knocking on your door and asking, would you like to become a Mormon? Well, they've got to try. You know, that's what religions do. They've all got to try and recruit new members. Otherwise, their religion will die out. I suppose so. And that's the, you know, that they're, they're all salespeople, effectively. All, all religions are the same, you know. That, and you just, you take your choice. You just, well, if you're born in, in, in a country where uh, Christianity is the predominant religion, if you're born in a country where... Um, Islam is the predominant religion. You are likely to believe in that particular religion. That's, that's, an, just, that's that an, you're brought up with yes, it. Yes. Okay. Then this is a very interesting conversation. We we're going to get onto that, were we? <laughs> well, well, it's always you that brings it up. Well, we're not. We're, we're trying to give a, a sort of a, a worldwide view of things, aren't yes. we? Because I mean, we've got people watching from all parts of the world. And we we must have people who believe in all sorts of different religions. Let's start our own, Mr. Duncan. There are about 2,000 religions. Exactly. That's, so, a, that's, a, that's going to be a lo very long live stream. <laughs> and if you're brought up from a very young age and are told that that is the religion to believe in, then you're going to find it difficult to take on board other religions. But I think now as we become a more open world i think people can see people can educated people can understand i don't think it matters what you believe in really no as long as you know if you want to believe in something believe in something well my, well Fine. my my take my my view is just if it gets you through the day and you go to sleep with a smile on your face then that's all it matters what we need to start our own religion mr Duncan. just what don't do just it? don't knock on my door uh, and tell me that I should be doing it. That's no, that's that's where I like that. That's where I draw the line. You see, is when you knock on my door and say, "You are going to hell, Mr. Duncan," and I will go, "No, you can go to hell." <laughs> I don't remember anybody ever knocking on our door telling us we were going to hell. Has anybody actually ever done that? I think they said hell in a handbag. They said <laughs> you're going to hell in a handbag. I don't know what that means, by the way. <laughs> Well, we've probably provoked a lot of live chat. I don't, about, I don't think so. Uh, I'm not doing this to provoke anybody. Oh, Angela says polygamy is illegal in the US. Some, some might still practice it, but they practice it illegally. Yes. So, uh, hmm, right, I'd, interesting. I'd, the other thing that fascinates me about the Mormon religion is is the way they actually created the religion. It, it, oh, was, all, right. it was all sent in, in a big hat. Well, because why I, not? Because, as you know, I like hats very much. So I, I felt very, very strangely drawn towards the Mormon religion because because all all of the, the actual tablets of stone came came in a big giant hat. Why not? So I, I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Anything to do with hats. As you know, I get very excited about hats, as you can see. If you... Wearing, if, my, if, wearing my Santa hat tonight. Why not? Why... Uh, Everything and anything could be true because, don't forget, in an infinite universe, and we've talked about this before, Mr Duncan, if the universe is infinite, and we don't know whether it is or not, or even if it's very close to infinite, so what I mean is if the universe just goes on and on and on forever, then that brings up an interesting scientific concept that... Uh, Anything is possible because if you've got an infinite universe, I can hear then lots anything of... and everything is in fact possible. Yes, okay, then so don't, we won't go please, into why. Please don't. Yes, please so don't therefore, 
It doesn't matter. Anything's believable. Well, are you OK? I think Steve's having another another breakdown. Having a breakdown, Mr Duncan. I'm just discussing... We're, we're discussing religion. And I'm just saying that in an infinite universe, probably anything is possible. So <laughs> probably all the religions are right. They're probably all right. <laughs> They're all a bit right and all a bit wrong. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, probably. I don't know. We'll never know. Well, I, I don't believe in any of it, so, you know. You don't know. Well, I don't really. Hello, but, Mr uh, Duncan and Mr Steve. We've got the live chat and then we're going to have a look at some of our Christmas cards. We've had not many this year. We, we normally get lots, but we haven't had so many this year. I can tell we? you exactly how many we've had, Mr Duncan. How many have we had? We have had 24. <gasps> 24 so far. <gasps> And uh, last year, I think we had about 35, something like that. I have that. a feeling we're not going to get any more. So we're trying to break the record. Um, the universe is expanding, says Caridas. Well, th that's it. But, of course, we can only see <laughs> as far <sighs> as uh, uh, the light has travelled from the furthest point. Yes. So we can only see back about 13 billion years, because that's supposedly the age of the universe. Uh, so we can't see anything beyond there because it's, the light hasn't reached us yet. Um, so nobody knows. The universe is expanding, but it could be. It just could go on forever. I think Steve's been reading Professor Brian Cox's books again. No, no, that this, this was on Horizon, uh, which is a popular scientific programme. Yeah, you say UK. this every time, by the way. Yeah, You're well, literally saying exactly the same thing. I haven't you said it say. for a while. Alternate universes. The, the the universe is big. Yes, it's true. It's very big, and yeah. it's it's getting bigger every day. Tomek's going to bed a already. Bit, a bit like my bottom. <laughs> it's getting bigger, <laughs> bigger every day. An expanding waistline. <laughs> Mr. Duncan's got an expanding waistline. I haven't. We've got an expanding universe. We've got an expanding. Waistline. I'm soon going to be pushed out of the off the camera. It's going to go supernova. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't oh the gravity the gravity I'm going to need straps to hold me back yes. I'm only joking I'm only joking Mr Duncan I think you're going to need straps <laughs> to restrain you at the uh, local nut house well, I've got something here that you can you can get rid of me with um, well they they found another planet says Angela have they <laughs> they're always finding new planets well we we had nine then they downgraded Pluto to, to, to an asteroid or yes. something and they then they put Pluto back up to a planet. So are you saying, Angela, that they found another planet? What beyond Pluto's orbit? But they're always finding these new planets, and they always say we found a new planet, and it's just like Earth. But the problem is, it would take us twenty million years to get there. So it's pretty pointless, really. And then they show you a photograph, and it's just a tiny little dot on a piece of paper and they say look look this this is a new planet this is what they do they go look we have found a new planet there it is oh get excited everyone get excited look there it is that's our new planet we, we could go there if if we had some some amazing maybe maybe some sort of Star Trek ship that could that could warp through space but that, but that, yeah, that's the sort of thing they normally do. They say we found a new planet, and this is what it looks like. It's very small. Well, yes, you see, the, the, they they keep talking about going to Mars. Well, a, a probe has landed on Mars, hasn't it? Recently, hmm. uh, successfully, which is very good. Uh, so we might find out a bit more about Mars. Uh, but we're not going to be going there, are we, Mr. Duncan? Because it's too. We well, need. We need. Have I, uh, as I've said this before. When you say we, do you mean us? <laughs> I'm not going to Mars. It takes months to get there. We need something more than just giant fireworks in order to get to uh, the planet. <laughs> I, I, I saw the documentary about Matt Damon going there, and it didn't look very good. Exactly. All we've got uh, to. Uh, as far as propulsion is concerned, it's just giant fireworks. Yes. That's all we've got. Again, you, you said this the other week. <laughs> We're um, not going to Mars and back. It's um, not happening. Am I watching the replay of... <laughs> is this a replay of, of the live stream from a few weeks ago? <laughs> it's Christmas, everyone. Christmas is on the way. Are you excited? Will you be celebrating Christmas or will you not be celebrating Christmas? We are having chicken this year instead of turkey. And... 
Coach is giving us lots, lots of compliments. Oh, let's have a look. Saying that the studio's wonderful. Oh, thank you. He likes my hat. Thank you very much. And he also says that we're all going to heaven. Oh, OK. Which, uh, yes. I like the music that they play. Uh, yes, it's nice music up there, I think. Oh, Relaxing. I thought, I thought you meant the nightclub in London. <laughs> no, no. Is that still open? I'm not sure if it is. It's still open for business. Angela, tell us what planet they found, because I haven't heard that news. Oh, dear. It's that, it's that, isn't that, it's always that same one. Matrix says, are we following, are you following my religion? Well, what is your religion, Matrix? Will you tell us, please do. <laughs> and Matrix wants a new religion. Yes, let's all make a new religion. Yes. If, if you lean on that table again, I, I literally am going to just fine. kick you down the road. Let's think of why don't we just create our own religion? Because you, you can make a lot of money out of making your own religion. Because you get a lots of people to believe in you. Yeah. Ask for donations. Yeah. Is this a religion? Yeah. I think your English St lessons, Mr. Duncan. Steve, we can do this on your camera. You're on your own. We have created a new religion, the religion of English teaching to the whole world. The Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve show. This is the new religion. Join us. Donate to us. And we will give you all that you require in the world of English. That's it. That's all I've got to say. Well, that was... <laughs> That was completely underwhelming. Mark this day, a new religion is born today. What should we call it? <laughs> I'm going to call it, I'm getting out of here. Let's call it something. This is like a religion. We've it got is. followers. We're the, we're the, the could you say, prophets? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether you could. Uh, yes, you're a prophet, Mr Duncan, and our followers are watching us. I'm Pray not. Pray to us. On your knees. <laughs> I'm only joking. I like that bit. <laughs> oh, that. No, we don't demand any of that sort of fawning behaviour. Uh, we'll be quite happy with, you know, $10. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're going to get anything now after all of that. I'm just joking. You know what I'm like. I get carried away once the live stream's going. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm holding back at the moment because... You know what happens if I let go? There is a live stream coming out of your mouth. It's just a live stream of, of rubbish. I didn't want to come on tonight. I said to Mr Duncan, I'm too tired. I don't want to come on tonight. <laughs> you poor man. I'm very thirsty. Those, samo those samosas are very salty. That's the only drawback. They're very salty. They make you thirsty. Yes. Anyway, as I was saying, we've we've had 24 cards. OK. Here they are. We've wow. had 24 cards. Quite a few. It was more than I thought. Uh, but I've sent out. And here they are. These are the cards that I'm going to post tomorrow. It's very late to be posting Christmas cards to people because I've had to put first class stamps on them because tomorrow is the last posting date to guarantee that they will arrive in time for Christmas. As usual... It's always very late. As usual, Steve has left it all to the last minute. I, you don't write out... He doesn't write out any. I, don't. I have to do all of them to all our friends and relations. Well, I do them all. Most of the cards that we receive are for you anyway. Do you remember last year we counted how many cards that you received and how many cards I received? And it turned out that, that you received many, many more cards than I did. I can't help being so popular, Mr Duncan. People love me. They adore me. I think, I think personally, <laughs> what I think, I think Steve is actually writing them himself and then posting them. He's, he's driving all around the country and then he's posting them. So, so, so the letters will have different postmarks. I think that's what he's doing. <laughs> Anyway, I'm having, it's costing me twice as much in postage because I'm having to put first class stamps on them. Hmm. Uh, do you want to uh, look at some of the postcards, some of the cards that we've received? Yet? Let's have a look at some of the Christmas cards. Right. Well, we can't, we've got to go with my mother first. Where, where, where are we going with your mother? The card that she sent to us. Stephen Duncan. May this Christmas be even better than you dreamed it would be. 
Enjoy every festive moment. Lots of love. Mum. That's nice. Let's and let's put that on the camera and have a little look. Oh, isn't that lovely? That's very nice. Well, yes. It's uh, show a bit more of it, Mr. Duncan. Wait there. It isn't on yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Are you ever going to realise that one of the screens is a preview screen and the other screen? There we go. It's a fireplace. It's a fireplace. It's I can see fireplace. there are some logs. They look like potatoes. Really? <laughs> they look like potatoes. You can clearly me. tell that they are logs. Well, from here, they look like potatoes. Isn't that lovely? I like that. And it says, wishing you both joy yes. and warm and warmth this Christmas. Isn't that lovely? And there is a little fire. Isn't that nice? I like that. That's great. It's nice, isn't it? Because, of course, we've got a fire and... Uh, uh, and Mother always likes to send cards that have like a something that will resonate with us. Thank Here's you. another nice one. This one's from my sister. OK, then. I'm not going to read it out. Have a lovely time. Oh, I see. Looking forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, I, I hope that I don't see you for the rest of the year. You get. Oh, OK. Yes, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's just friendly banter. Yes. She didn't. She didn't really say that. No, that's lovely. That's a nice card. It's I would say that's the most high quality card we've had so far. It's a very posh card. Because of course we do really look at these cards and say, well, how much have people spent on cards for us this year? Are they cheapskates or have they actually spent <laughs> a little bit of money on some cards? And that's quite an expensive one. Of course, it's themed on birds coming into the garden which we like particularly you Mr Duncan yes. you feed the birds and that's a quality card it is and I'd like to know who made it yes oh don't don't move it just yet okay yes <laughs> so I've that's got... a nice card that's two nice cards so far I've gone to a lot of trouble to to set this camera up so we can have a overhead view so isn't that lovely yes that's very that is I think you're right Steve that is a very posh card it's a very posh card not surprising of course uh, right now this is the most annoying card I've had so far annoying oh yes but we'll look at the cheapest one in a minute is, is this card going to annoy me it's going to annoy you probably for the rest of the year oh, I know what you're going to say already one word glitter is it glitter Come on, bring it over. Uh, it's from, actually, a very good friend of mine who I've known for a long time, many years. And uh, But I opened the card and obviously in transit, a lot of the glitter came off the card and it all fluttered out all over me. There we go. It's all over my hands now. Okay. Uh, there we go. Show it. But don't say who it's from because okay. we don't want to upset them. Why would why would they be upset? Would they be embarrassed by the fact that they know you? <laughs> I doubt that they're watching us. I mean, it's a nice card, but we don't want the glitter. No. Uh, and in fact, it's being banned. No, it hasn't been banned. Not yet, but it probably <laughs> will be this time next year. Yes. They're banning glitter in the UK. So so that's now we're re are we replaying Sunday's live stream now? Because that's what we're talking about. Well, not everybody uh, was... On Sunday. Christmas wishes. So that's nice. Christmas that's wishes. Nice. Thank you very much. Oh, I nearly said his name then. It's from, let's just call him an old flame. Oh, wait right there. Why what? do you keep grabbing it? Just I leave it. Know. You've got to learn some studio discipline. Now, of course, car you get cards from relatives and <laughs> friends. And one of the commonest things that uh, people seem to put in... You, I'm sending cards to people that I haven't seen for 20 years, sometimes 30 years. You send them a Christmas card every year and every year you seem to put in it, oh, must see you in 2019. And we know that they don't mean it. <laughs> they, they don't mean it. We don't mean it. I always put it in because we've got no intention of... Well, well we'd like to meet up with them, but we just never get round to it because life gets so busy that you never end up making that phone call to actually set a date to all go and meet up. Hmm. And we've had... But I'm determined in 2019, Mr Duncan, we are going to meet up. 
with some of these people who we haven't seen for many years. Will we recognise them? Will they recognise us? Obviously, they'll recognise me because I haven't aged in 20 years. Not quite sure what they'll make of yourself, but uh, never... <laughs> Mr. Duncan. Oh, well, I'm annoying Mr. Duncan. He's you're going not, to get angry. I'm just, I'm just wondering what you're talking about. <laughs> and the other thing that you get is is the the round robin. Okay. Well, so, is, is that a robin that's very fat? Round robin is 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 an, an expression used to mean when people uh, send uh, a synopsis of what they've done over the last twelve months. And they obviously send it to everybody they send Christmas cards to. So you haven't seen them. You don't see them from one year to the next, but they write out this long... And here... here I'm, not, I'm not going to show it to the camera. So uh, there it is. It says it's short. It starts off saying it's short. Don't do that, Mr Duncan. They can't, they can't see that. Well, people with technology will be able to expand it and read it. There you go. Uh, but actually... So they tell you what's happened in their lives, their family, over the last 12 months, which is, you know, it's mild, mildly interesting, I would say. Uh, co but, co cocaine addiction, uh, prison, uh, also, oh, tropical disease. Oh, yes. Well, no, we shouldn't mock so, because we shouldn't someone, mock. Someone has had a very busy year. Well, they've had a very tragic year, this particular person. Okay, then. Yes. Uh very tragic year. In fact, it's always tragedy with it with these with these friends of ours. It is with you as well. Every year they write us something and something really bad's happened to them. Merry Christmas. Last year somebody had cancer. This year, what, why are you giving these details away? Anyway, but people do that. This is called a round robin. So they put this in all the cards they send to everybody to update everybody about what they've been up to over the last 12 months. It's like a recap. Because you haven't seen them. A recap. Yes, a recap. Yes. So a recap means you go back over all of the things that have happened. So all of the notable things, the notable moments from the year, you write a little letter or a note. And quite often you will put it in a Christmas card or maybe a birthday card. Next. There's a very traditional looking card. That is very traditional with a rotund Father Christmas on the front. Rot rotund? Rotund, fat. <laughs> I, I've never heard anyone describe another person as rotund. Hello, you're very rotund, aren't no, you? <laughs> no, one, no one is ever saying that. You'd probably get a punch. Well, you wouldn't. Yes, it just means round. Large. Large. But rotund is like cylindrical, like a c can of baked beans. Mm. You know that, don't you? Yeah, but so, you so do you're... describe a, an overweight person. If somebody is sort of round in shape... Yes, you do, Mr Duncan. You say ro they're rotund. I've never heard... I've never heard a person. Yeah, I've heard somebody of somebody who is literally round. I've heard of pil buildings being described as rotund, but not... Anyway... People, yes, you can. Well, there was a building in... Isn't there a building in London called the Rotunda? <laughs> There's one in Birmingham. Birmingham, then? Yes, not it's London. Round. Not London. There is, a, there is a building in Birmingham called the Rotunda. And there it is, a, a very traditional Christmas card with, yes, Mr Crimbo himself, Santa Claus. Did you know Santa? Santa is an anagram of Satan. Blimey, I never thought, I never thought of that, Mr Duncan. I'm going to write that down. Yes, Santa is actually an anagram of Satan. And they both wear red clothes. How bizarre oh, is that, Mr. Yes. Duncan? And they both, they both, although one lives in a very hot place and the other one lives in a very cold place. <laughs> Could they be one and the, one and the same? No. Because I just said they, they live in different places. So I don't think it's the same person. But it is unusual. Well, Santa is encouraging us to be very materialistic. Yes. By giving us all presents and okay. getting us to envy all the possessions of other people. So maybe he is evil. Isn't that, isn't that supposed to be a sin? Coveting other people's goods. It is. And Santa encourages us to, to become envious of other people's uh, <laughs> possessions. Thou shall not covet next door neighbour's new lawnmower. That's in the Ten Commandments. 
It is, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't chime with uh, materialism and uh, trying to ramp up the economy. Okay. Uh, here's a. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, but but in biblical times, they didn't have Amazon. Well, that's it. They didn't. <laughs> So maybe that's that's the reason why. Probably, probably it would all be about what type of horse you had. Yes. Or camel. So instead of instead of following a star, I think the th the three wise men would have followed a drone. Instead, it would have been a drone Ooh. flying through the sky, with a little light flashing. So they would have followed the drone instead. In when? In now? You mean? Yes. Didn't you hear the words I just said? I wasn't concentrating. I was thinking what I could say next, you see. Right, I'm trying. Here's a card. People often make their own cards, don't they now? They do. Uh, because they're a bit artistic <laughs> and uh, perhaps they're trying to save money, but probably they're just trying to be different. And instead of sending you uh, one that's come out of that's been made in its millions, been mass produced. Yeah. They want to give it a personal touch and make their own. It's very popular, this. So, so you mean handmade? A handmade card, yes. So here's a handmade card for some friends of ours that we haven't seen for a long time. Nothing inside. They Actually, actually... What do you mean there's nothing inside? It's blank. Uh, can I just have a quick... Well, they've vote? sent you a Christmas card with nothing inside. Right, so... <laughs> So we haven't seen these two for a long time. I've noticed this year they've given up saying must see you in. They would put 2019 in. Normally they put, oh, we must meet up in this year. Quite, pe quite often people put must not meet up or must not see you in the following year. There's glitter everywhere now. OK, yes, thank you. It'll thank be on our faces. You, you do that, you rub your face, there'll be glitter, glitter for, for there for weeks. Yes. So this is a handmade card. That's very nice. So let's show this off. Handmade. Yeah, we've got some sparkly things on it. Sparkly things. Is that glitter? Look at that. That's actually that's quite nice. That looks very nice on my on my screen. Let me just put that on. So this is a Christmas card that we've received and it's handmade from who is it from? It's from I think it's from Oh yes, I thought so. Some of our friends who lived down south. They lived in France for a while, didn't they? Yes, they never invited us over. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> uh, right. Steve said that, not me. I still like you. <laughs> we try well, to invite ourselves. I have uh... a feeling, Steve, we won't be getting one of... One of <laughs> I don't think, Steve, I don't think we'll be getting one of these next year somehow. I don't think they're watching. I don't think we're going to get one of these next year. Here's quite a traditional card with a traditional theme on it. OK. The three wise men <laughs> on their camels going towards Bethlehem, following the star. We, we need some wise men because there aren't any here. So that's quite a traditional card. I always like cards, even from a young age. I always love cards with the three wise men on. I don't know why. <laughs> following the star. Because even even if you find it difficult to believe in, in these religious messages and, and stories, they're just nice to believe in because it is a nice story. Whatever religion that you believe in, they've all got their, their, their nice stories. And, uh, you know, that's a nice story. There they go. Frankincense with their frankincense, gold and myrrh. You know, I sometimes think that maybe mm. one day Harry Potter... Maybe 2,000 years from now, people will think that Harry Potter was real and they'll all start sort of building uh, replicas of Hogwarts and well, they'll, they'll think that, that, that Harry... They'll find a, an old copy of, of Harry Potter, uh, one of the books, and they'll think that maybe Harry Potter was a real person. They might dig a copy of the book and say, oh, this is real, this is, this is the, the revelation we've been waiting for. All pray to Harry Potter. Well, unless it's uh, against the laws of physics, it probably is happening somewhere oh. or did happen somewhere or will happen in the future. Yes, I've got it. Your alternate universes. Yes, very good. Alternate, infinite. Anything's does, possible. Does that, does that mean that somewhere there is a universe where we are doing a live stream that people like? 
<laughs> and we're making millions. Look, here's a nice one as well. Carol singers standing outside uh, somebody's door singing carols, which is uh, a tradition, what you would call a traditional Christmas festive scene. Snow on the ground. There we go. I'll let you place it on the on the in the, in the viewer. That's nice. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Now, I don't think people really do this anymore. Certainly <laughs> not in the UK. Um, I think sometimes you will get carol singers who will stand uh, definitely in shopping mouths. Uh, and maybe you'll get them standing in groups in a town centre if they're fundraising for a charity. Mm. But they won't just come round to your door anymore and start no. singing carols. Well, they come round to my door, but I always tip a big bucket of cold water onto them. Yes, he, do he does. That is true. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's another one, Mr Duncan. Oh, let's have a look. You seem very intrigued. Oh, the yes. The general theme... Uh, I would say that the, the, the main theme of the Christmas cards this year, and probably most years, is, is, is the theme of religion. Yes. And there is, we've had the three wise men, and now we've got uh, Mary with little Jesus. <laughs> little Jesus. <laughs> yes. There we go. So there it is. And this is not lovely. And this one is a, is a charity card. So this one is raising money for Christian aid, which oh. is probably why that's probably why it has a religious theme, you see. So let's just put that down there. Isn't that, oh, that is quite nice. That looks like a painting or, or maybe a watercolour or, ma or maybe an etching with pastels. Let's have a look. So here's another one. Doo, doo, doo. Isn't that nice? Yes, that's quite nice. I like the colours, very warm colours. And that particular one is for, as I mentioned, Christian aid. So that's nice. So I wonder who sent that to us. Ah, yes, it's a friend from Wolverhampton. Oh, I see. Viv. I, I, um, I, I, yes, is, is a friend from Wolverhampton. And that one, actually, I think you're right. If you turn it over again, Mr Duncan, okay. uh, you will see that it is actually, I think, it is, it's called Mary and Child by... Paul Fisher Johnson. OK, so there is actually a credit there so for, that. for the person who drew it. So you were right. Yes. OK, that's nice. Here's another charity card. And on the back, there must be, because with these charity cards, when you spend money on the card, mm -hmm. so much of a proportion of what you spend goes to the charity. Uh, a very small proportion. I've got to say, I think it's something like if the card costs a pound, probably two pence. Yes, yeah, so it, well, it does vary. It, it does varies. vary. Yes, it's fair to point out that it does vary between charities. Oh, yes. I, that's, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But there's one here that's got one, two, about four charities on the back. So okay. that's, the money's going to be diluted quite significantly. So we've got breast cancer. Uh, we've got Macmillan. Oh, it's all, it's all to do with cancer. Uh, Un oh, UNICEF as well which is a children's charity, I think. The Woodland Trust uh, to preserve uh, woodlands. So we've got all sorts of charities on the back of this one. So another charity card. Another charity card, yes. We've got oh. the three wise men again. Oh, well, this actually is more than that. This is actually the nativity. Yes. This is actually a scene of the nativity. So that's very, very Christmassy. Exactly. I think so, yes. I think you're right. That, that, that looks very, very Christmassy. I like that very much. And on the back, there are many charities listed on the back. Uh, yes, I could show them all, but we'd be here all night. Hmm. Shall we have a quick look at the... Uh, oh, yes. Live chat. Here is the live chat. It's still very busy, very brisk. I don't know how many viewers we have, but it's nice to see you here anyway. Belarus is here. She's been working. Oh. Been working, and instead of resting, she's watching us. So I hope this is a nice surprise for you. Although, fortunately, for people in South America, it, it's still early. So I, I feel sorry for anyone watching in Asia, 
because it's very late there. In fact, it will be very early in the morning now. Ah. If you're watching in, say, Japan or Vietnam, it's very, very early in the morning. Angela says the real Saint Nick helped orphans. He was such a wonderful man. We will be talking about that on Sunday because we are back on Sunday, don't forget. Oh, that's an interesting point. Sorry. So, yes. Oh, OK. I thought you were going to read the whole message out. Well, Angela I'm not was. because we're going to do this on Sunday. That, 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 that's literally what I, ju literally what okay. I just said. <laughs> the real Saint Nick. Yes, we'll be talking about the real Saint Nick because uh, Father Christmas is based on a real person and we'll talk about that on Sunday because we are back then for those wondering we are live every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time and also if you want to make a donation maybe a little Christmas gift to help all of this continue don't forget we do this for free so we give our time and I've been giving my time for the last 12 years free free of charge yes Belarusia nice to see you here also Jeff is here as well our old friend oh. our friend Jeff watching in Florida yes so we've got at least two people watching us in America tonight yeah and Jeff thank you for uh, because I forgot we forgot to mention it we were watching it later and we noticed that you'd uh, you'd hope that I would get a nice red Mustang <laughs> for Christmas. Yes. Uh, well, I'm hoping. You never know. Mr. Duncan may surprise me. <laughs> yes. Well, there will be a surprise. Uh, There'll be a surprise. And that will be that there's no Ford Mustang. That's the surprise, you see. That not I'm... even a little model one. Oh, we have Vietnam watching. Lin Tran. Can I say good morning, Vietnam? <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, so, Jeff said he sent a small card email. Yes, well, you can send little emails and you have a little mm. Christmas card oh, in them. Oh, lovely. Haven't, you'll have to show me that. I will check that later and I will show it to you on Sunday. Do you want to see some of the stamps that <laughs> okay. we had? OK, wow. This is... We're going to take it up a notch, are we? Yes, some of the, the Christmas-themed stamps, because normally, you see, that if you put that one on first, that's a normal stamp that you would use throughout the year. Can you see uh, that? You probably need to put it under your special... Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? OK. OK, let me just put it on the, uh, the table. Here we go. So this is your sort of average stamp that you would send out in the UK. That's a second class stamp. And uh, if you just put the edge of that one on. Uh, that's a first class stamp, which is red. The second class is, is blue. That, that's your, your average everyday stamps. And they've put a line through that now. That's what they do now. So you can't reuse the stamp. Uh, but, of course, because it's Christmas, we have special Christmas-themed stamps in the UK. And uh, here's a little selection of the ones that we've received. Oh, OK. Wait uh, there. This is testing your uh, skills, Mr Duncan. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of hands. I need, I need two more arms. Well, I would do it, but you'll get mad if I, if I reach across you. I want you. to be like that octopus. I do it? Like, you're that octopus guy from... Uh, you know that man from Spider-Man? You're leaning all over me. This is terribly unprofessional. Oh, nobody minds. You're blocking me. You're blocking the light. It's just terrible. Terrible. You have absolutely no studio discipline. So let's have a look. Yes. OK. So there's a couple. Maybe if we put... I'll up. arrange them. You see, this This is why I should do it. Because then it's, it's done properly. OK. There we go. See? That's how you that's how you do it, Steve. There's some of our stamps. So one's got a snowman Ooh. snowman on it. Mm. Uh, the other one's people posting letters into a post box in a snowy scene. And there again we've got a, a, a religious theme, <laughs> Mary and the Baby. Welcome to uh, Welcome to describing what's on postage stamps with Mr. Steve. <laughs> this you know, on the Big Bang Theory, they have fun with flags. Well, maybe maybe we can we can have fun with stamps, where where Mr. Steve shows 
postage stamps and then he describes what is on them although oh. although the only problem is most of ours have have the queen's head on them and nothing else <laughs> so that would be very boring well i thought people he, he's, there's a fun one look. <laughs> i like that one so i there, thought you would he's a good one okay i will put this on the table just a moment that's that's great i like that one steve well done at last something that's interesting <laughs> Ooh. It's a penguin. Yes, I haven't shown it yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just explain, Steve. Steve, look at me. No, I'm not looking at you. Look at me. There, that is the preview. So that is not going out to the audience. That is the output. That is what the people, the people watching. You mean their, our lovely viewers. The people watching the little picture on their computer. That's what they see. And that's what we see when we're previewing. Yes, you're being very condescending, I'm Mr. Not, Duncan. Condescending. I'm not, because you still don't understand the concept. Uh, yes, I'm just talking. It's up to you to sort it all out. You've been co-hosting this for one and a half years. Mm. You should by now know the difference between preview yeah, screen... Oh, right, Mr. Duncan, yes. ...preview screen and output screen. Well, we don't need to explain that to our lovely viewers. No, but we do need to explain it to you. Well, maybe we should do... <laughs> That's off camera. I did tonight before we started. <sighs> Why don't you just do it and not draw attention to it's it? It's not so bad, but but it actually has the, the, the words written above. I'm looking at one. the camera, you see. I'm yes. looking at the, at the people. I'm looking at our wonderful viewers. <laughs> who is there anyone still watching this, Mr. Duncan, do you think? I have no idea. After our stamp collecting uh, segment. <laughs> so, yes. So here is the penguin. <laughs> there we go. I bet that's made your night. There it is, little penguin saying hello. It looks like Jacob Rees-Mogg. Do you know the politician called Jacob Rees-Mogg? He's he's like he's like someone from the late 18th century, and that looks a little bit like him. Hello, my name is J Jacob Rees-Mogg, and my nanny puts me to bed every night, and I. I want a hard Brexit. I want my Brexit hard. Give me a hard Brexit. I don't think he wants that, but anyway, there we go. Uh, a penguin. OK. Because for some reason, penguins are Christmassy, presumably because they live in cold, snowy places. Don't put that on there, because oh, these all, we've got to, of course, string these all up and we've got to hang these all up. Haven't we? All these Christmas cards. OK, where are you going? I've got to be hung up <laughs> and put out. Uh, I'm sure people know what oh, to do with Christmas cards. Aren't you showing cards. any more? No. Why well, do you want me to? Well, there I'm are off more. To bed. I'm off to bed. I'm tired. Oh, okay. There are loads here. Yes, there are loads here. <laughs> there we go. Stocking. But well, let's be quick. Let's get let's get through these quickly. Oh, I think, I think I've upset Steve. No, you haven't upset me. I'm fine. There we go. <laughs> A stocking. That's a well. What I like about that is, is look, that they, they've used a button. So there is a little button that they've used there. So this might, this looks handmade. I don't know why. It sort of looks, looks like it might be handmade. But that's, I like, I do like. That's one of my favourites. I like that one. Right. Okay. I like the fact that they've used a real thing. You see, a button, and it says, "For you, for you, Mary." Christmas isn't that nice I like that one I like that one yes that's very nice the Christmas collection oh I like that yes handmade handmade just for you isn't wow. that isn't that nice? I like that one they've stuck a button on that that's the extent of the handmadeness of that card they've just stuck a button on <laughs> okay n next and then we'll have a look at the live chat there we go we'll see if anyone is still there for some reason after mr S mr steve was describing the appearance of stamps a uh, a rabbit in the snow obviously is <laughs> about to come onto your screen there we go it's actually a hair okay it's a hair yeah oh God, well yeah you see i was just testing you there mr duncan no you weren't you you uh, didn't ha you didn't have a clue <laughs> You just said the first thing that came into your head. It's a hair. I know it's a hair because it's got those uh, those big ears. <laughs> yes. So uh, why did you say it was a rabbit? Uh, because uh, I just wanted to see if you uh, would notice and pick up on uh, on my uh, deliberate mistake. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. Mind. There we go. That's a, a charity for mental health. Yes. Uh, the, a charity <laughs> that I think you're very familiar with, Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> very, Mr Duncan. Very familiar with. Now, this one here uh, is probably, I would say, probably after the baby Jesus. This is probably the commonest type of Christmas card that you will receive in the UK. Uh, Christmas trees or this, which no one can see because of your green screen. It's a little robin. One of my my all time favorite birds is the robin. Isn't that lovely? I love the vivid colors. So you've got lots of green, lots of orange. And the white background really makes the robin stand out. So I like that. Yes, that's really nice. And you will notice there, seasons greetings. You will notice that there is an apostrophe in seasons because this is possessive. We are using a possessive phrase there. So the greeting that belongs to this, this season. Seasons greeting. Isn't that nice? Annoying me. Isn't that nice? That's lovely. I like that one. Who's that one from? Don't know. Oh, OK, that's good. Have a look. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, it's from our friends Jim and Ralph. Yes. And look what they say. Long time no see. Long time no see. What they are saying is we haven't seen you for a long time. I think it must be maybe six, maybe seven years since we've seen them. Here's the smallest card we've received this year. OK. The smallest. That looks like another penguin. It is another penguin. It looks like it's it's had a sun tan, got a bit of a suntan as well. That's from a friend of mine who I've known for over 30 years, who I went to, to college with. Oh, yes, our friends Sonia and Brent. We, we often meet up for a curry with we them. We do. So here is their card. And oh, actually, it isn't a penguin. It's a robin. You see, you should have corrected me, Steve. You could have had your chance there. But I'm not. I'm not. Haven't got that nasty personality <laughs> where I would want to get revenge on you and land that way. Oh, are you sure about that? There we go. So there is a robin. A little robin there. I thought it was a penguin because it does look a bit like a penguin, but it is in fact a robin from our friends Sonia and Brent. A Very lovely, nice. uh, you know, the, the theme there is a bit of fun, yes. which is what you want to be cheered up. We we could do with some cheering up. How about that one? After. Traditional, another traditional uh, look to a card there. It's a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree. You can't go wrong on a Christmas card with a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree. Did, 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 did. I must say this Christmas tree looks better than our Christmas tree. We're not being judgmental. But I would say that is the cheapest card we've had this year. Yeah. Who is it from? I'm not going to say. We are not going to say who that is from. Because can, I, can I say? No. OK, wait, wait, wait. Oh, mind your hands, mind your hands. It, it doesn't look it, but there's no writing on the back. And you just know it's from a giant box of of uh, it's, it's from a supermarket somewhere where they bought probably 50 in a box yes. for two pounds 50. A multi pack. A multi pack, which we don't mind. We're not being snobby, but you do do that. I think we do that every year when when people send you cards, you look at the the quality of it and you judge them on that. So the, the cards I sent out to people were were, were very inexpensive. So <laughs> they'll all think we're cheap skates. Yes, especially cheap skates. Especially you. Yes, a cheap skate is a person who doesn't spend much money on things. Any more? Oh, I like That's this. That's a nice one. one. That's a nice one. It has a sort of. Let me help you there. It has a has a nautical feel, a nautical feel because it's showing boats. Oh yes, that, that fits perfectly on the screen. I like the way that fits on. Yeah, they can't see it yet. Isn't that nice? That's no. the preview screen, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I know. I know it is. Uh, that's the output screen. Yes, but but I I'm just commenting as I'm positioning it, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not talking as if it's already on the screen. But now it is on the screen. Can you stop leaning on the table? I will. I, I'm going to put a, an, an electric current through oh, this table. My back's aching. You poor thing. So there it is. I like that one. So it's it's a sort of nautical. And that is probably a typical 
seen actually in a Dorset or Cornwall, southern England sort of uh, harbour. Mm. We've we've been to places where it looks just like that. Uh, where you've got buildings by the harbour, lots of boats. Oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling a bit seasick, Mr. Duncan. See what I'm doing there? I'm, I'm making it look like the boats are are, are are swaying on the water. Very clever. It's, isn't that good? Uh, that looks like it could be from hundreds of years ago. But in fact, if you go to Cornwall or Devon and uh, go to don't go to these little ports, these little villages by the sea, yeah. you will see something very similar to that. Yes. Look at that. It's, there, there are people now tuning in and they think they're watching a Peter Jackson film because that, that, that special effect is so good. They're going to go, oh, is this a new Lord of the Rings film? Look, look, look at the special effects. They're so amazing. That's a charity card as well, but it's for, it's for uh, lifeboats. Oh, it's sinking. It's sinking. The boat is sinking. Blah, 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 oh. blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Women and children first. Uh. Well, interesting you should say that, Mr Duncan, because the charity on the back of here, camera one. <laughs> oh, camera, yeah, it's OK. Wait, let's switch to camera one. This is great. Wow. Here's Steve producing. Or is it camera two? The only problem with that is you, you don't... It's out of focus. Yes, that's it. Use it's... this one. This is why I've used this one, you see. see hello. That, that's what happens when you try to produce yourself. Let's go and say hello. I did say hello. Well, so while Mr Duncan... Uh, in a very professional way, uh, sets up the card, uh, then I will carry on talking for no apparent reason. So this charity, so these are friends of Duncan. I don't really know them that well. Yes, Mr Duncan does have the odd one or two friends. I have friends. <laughs> be said. I have friends. He has friends. Uh, and they moved to the south coast of England. I think, is it Devon or Cornwall, Mr Duncan? It is in Devon. And uh, so they have gone for a card where the uh, charity on the back is a lifeboat charity because, in fact, lifeboats in the UK are not paid for by central governments. They're funded by charities. Mm. So if you, if you go down in a boat and your boat sinks and you need uh, rescuing by, by a lifeboat... Um, that is not funded. You would think it would be funded uh, by government, but it's not. It's funded uh, by charities mm. um, like the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Association, is the most common one. What is this one, Mr Duncan? This simply says, well, this is, this is the one you've just mentioned. This is actually the one RNLI. you've just mentioned. Can I come back to the other camera? Yeah. I feel a bit odd. So, yes, it is actually the RNLI. And I will show you a little closer. Let's see if we can get closer there. There it is. So you can see, yes, indeed, it is the RNLI. Very good. There it is. So that is a lifeboat charity. They raise money so people can buy their lifeboats and they can maintain them. And also they can... Rescue people. Rescue people who are stranded or drowning. Those in peril on the sea. Yes. Isn't, uh, there, isn't there a, a religious song? Uh, well, it's a song. I don't know whether it's religious. Um, but there well, is they, a, a they, sing, song. they sing it in church. They probably do, yes. There is a famous Mr Bean episode where Mr Bean goes to church and, and they sing that song. For those in peril on the sea. And Mr Bean keeps falling asleep. So it looks like he's praying, but he's actually falling asleep. So he keeps sort of falling asleep. And, <laughs> and uh, but of course, they're not always rescuing people. People aren't always sinking in their boats or uh, drowning and falling off uh, lilos. Uh, so uh, when they're not rescuing people, they will... They will actually help if you want to be buried at sea. Uh, they will uh, they will assist you with that, and you can pay them a small sum of money. And uh, if your loved one has died and wants to be buried at sea, okay. So they want their ashes 
Not the body. <laughs> you can't just dump a body in the ocean. Well, you can. <laughs> well, you. But I mean, legally, you can do it. You can do it at night, and then you can wrap them up in a blanket and, and put a couple of rocks inside it, no. and then you can push them over the edge, and then they sink straight to the bottom. Yes, but if you say in your will, and a lot of people do do this, particularly we live on an island surrounded by the sea. It's true. Um, that is the definition of an island, by yes, the way. <laughs> yes, thanks for that. I'm glad you pointed that out. And some people, because they love the sea, they want to be buried at sea. Uh, obviously, you can't get your spade out and dig people, dig dig a hole in the sea. You can't dig a hole in water. No, so that's true. Normally, when you bury, that means you're digging a hole. But in at sea, when you say you're being buried at sea... Yes. Then uh, you're scattering the ashes. So yes. the body's been cremated. You've got this big urn with the ashes. And you don't want to hire a boat yourself and go out and uh, and uh, sprinkle the ashes all over the ocean. So Where's you can... Uh, <laughs> Where is this going? Well, what, where this is going is you can ask the services of the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat oh. Association, and pay them a small sum of money and they will... Take the urn, you will wave goodbye at the shore, and they will take go out and then they will sprinkle the ashes. Because actually, you know, that if you sprinkle the ashes of somebody on a boat at sea, it's very windy. Uh, you've got to be facing the right way because all the ashes blow into your face yes. otherwise. You might end up swallowing most of the person that you're, you're sprinkling around. It might all blow back in your face and then you, you end up eating a chunk of someone's granddad. So they'll do it for you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what happens though if there? <laughs> what would happen? I don't know if it's ever happened, but they are about to do a burial, and then they get a message saying that someone's boat has sunk. Do they abandon the burial and then do it later? Because if you were watching through binoculars, you'd be a bit disappointed if they suddenly just roared off to rescue somebody. But I suppose they're living. They've got to look after the living. Uh, and then the dead would come second, I would think, in that instance. But actually, you, but, but of course, nowadays they sprinkle the ashes because many people are cremated. But of course, in the past, where, when, when you had the, the navigators sailing around the world and, and if somebody died on the boat, they would, they would just push them into the sea. They would drop them, they would wrap them up and just push them and they would just plop. Sure they would. They would plop into the sea. And then the sharks and the and the fishes would eat them. Natural. That's a natural sort of you know way to to uh, to uh, recycle your body. You know, I've just realised that this has nothing to do with Christmas. I don't know how we got onto this subject. I, I apologise. Well, we're just anyway. What does the live chat say? The li no, nobody's writing anything. I'm, I'm just wondering whether we we are still on because no, no one's leaving any messages. Interesting. Which is very strange. <laughs> These are the messages that were sent ages ago. Perhaps everyone is so enthralled with what we're saying that they, they can't possibly take their eyes off the screen to write any messages. Or no one is or watching. no one is watching. Steve, mm. I'm going to put you on your camera. Why? You, you, can, can, you, can you do that while I go and check? And see what's going on. Oh, are you going to check the live stream, Mr. Duncan, to make sure everything's right? Oh, well, I've got something to show the viewers then. So uh, at this time of the year, when winter approaches, the little creatures from the garden, it's getting cold outside and wet and damp. And they don't want to be outside getting cold, wet and damp. So they try to get into the house. I'm talking about mice. Mice and, well, and voles, maybe not voles, but certainly mice every year try to get into the house and they go up into the loft and uh, you can hear them scratching around uh, and you don't want them in there because they can gnaw away at your electricity cables <laughs> and cause a fire. So unfortunately, I have to go up there every year and... Uh, well, you can set traps, but I just prefer to put down some good old fashioned poison. And here we go. This is my preferred poison of choice. <laughs> uh, rat and mouse killer. There we go. There's a nice little mouse about to have a munch at some grain that has been laced 
laced with poison. When we say something is laced, it means uh, something's added to it, but you can't really tell, you can't see it. Uh, well, I don't, they're probably colourblind mice, but up in the loft it's dark anyway. But they're very attracted to this, so they eat it, and then they die. It's very cruel. I don't like doing it, but we don't want them gnawing away at the woodwork and uh, possibly at the fire, at the cables and causing fires. And it's quite disconcerting when you're lying in bed about to fall asleep. You can hear all this scratching and chewing and gnawing in the loft. So tomorrow, I've heard, I've heard a bit of this today. I've heard a bit of gnawing and scurrying about, which is the telltale signs that we've got mice living in the loft. And I don't want to do it, but I'm going to have to go in the loft, Mr Duncan, and I'm going to have to poison them. Uh, because I can't keep going up and down in the loft. I don't like trapping them because in, in the mouse traps because they die up there. And it's a quick death. I'm sure it's a quicker death than this poison. But uh, I've got to keep going up and down in the loft all the time. And if I forget to do it, um, it'll get very smelly up there. <laughs> uh, so poison is my preferred choice for getting rid of mice in the loft. I'm just wondering, though, I hope Steve. I don't offend. I'm just wondering, Steve. Yes. How, how, how is... W won't the dead animals cause a smell anyway well apparently what they do is i've been told is that it makes them very thirsty and they they have to go outside ah, okay uh to look for water and then they die oh, okay apparently. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah. but i've seen lots of dead bodies up there so <sighs> yes i think we've got lots of lots of little nooks and crannies and holes in in, <laughs> in our in our Roof. There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than having a mouse in your cranny. <laughs> so, uh, oh yes, Jeff's got rats. Yes, we we had a rat once as well, and they really can cause serious damage. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, mice aren't too bad, but you certainly don't want a rat up there. You don't want rats in your kitchen. Uh, Ali says, uh, "I will send this video to Animal Rights Association." <laughs> Yes, but the, the thing is that, that you can kill mice. Oh, and yes, rats. I, th I think Ali's joking. Oh, I know, I'm just, I'm just saying it anyway. You can legally kill mice and rats and, and squirrels as well. Yes, yeah, squirrels, grey yes. gray squirrels, not red squirrels. They're seen as vermin, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so if you've got a little air rifle or a gun, you can actually kill squirrels legally. You can kill them so because they're classed as vermin. Uh, Matrix is, 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 is getting tired and going to bed. I must say, that's how I'm feeling. Yes. <laughs> I'm feeling very tired as well. But I think you were feeling that when we started the live stream. <laughs> I livened up, but now I've gone tired again. That's nice. Angela, Jeff, Matrix. Uh, we've, we haven't got many people watching, by the way. Angela says <laughs> that uh, the birds eat the poisoned rodents. Yes, they might do. It is a risk I'm going to have to take, unfortunately. Are we going then? Yes, I don't. Uh, yes, well, this is it. This is the problem. I mean, everything that we do, there's always an action and a reaction. So whatever you do, there will be a consequences. Prob There'll be consequences. If consequences. You let, if you let the mice become become o overrunning, and, and if they overrun the garden, if there are too many of them, then that's a problem as well. You don't want rats and mice everywhere. So you have to control them somehow. You do, and the and the, because Mr. Duncan puts out lots of bird food, oh. that attracts them. I knew I knew I would get the blame. Uh, but I, what's worse, our neighbours put out even more than you do, so I think it's it, it's their fault. Right, it's nearly midnight, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> There's twenty five <laughs> minutes to midnight. Well, well. It's nearer than it was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yes, but still not near enough. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. Come on, then. Come on, uh, uh, moderators. Do your business. You guys look like a couple of retarded uh, ass eaters. Uh, well, that's very kind of you. Thank and, you. And, and Thank can you for I, can the I, compliment. Can I just say you are, uh, <laughs> you are actually uh, right. <laughs> well done. 
<laughs> wouldn't have put it quite like that. Mr. But, uh, Mr. Steve, be aware that Mr. Duncan says he will put some poison in your porridge tomorrow. Because I interfered with your hat. No, nothing to do with that. I just want to do it anyway. <laughs> he may well do that, actually. Uh, he, he's threatened it before. So. <laughs> yes, yes, I do, actually. And at the front. I have two at the side as well, just in case. I think our moderators have gone to sleep. You might need to I do. <laughs> I don't know where the moderators have gone. I think they've gone to sleep. I think you're right. Still, we welcome everybody onto our live chat, yes. even abusive ones. Even halfwits. <laughs> oh, he knew. Well, <laughs> all I can say is your father has taught you well. <laughs> So we are going because Mr. Steve is very tired. I am. And I'm thirsty because those samosas have made me very thirsty. I have to put him to bed. Yes. He needs tucking in. I have to read him a, a bed night story, don't I? You do, yes. Yes. I think, uh, can you read me something about baby Jesus tonight? I will read you a passage. I will read, i tell you what I'll do. I'll read you a poem all about Christmas. Does that sound Lovely. good? Yes. There'll be I lots of send me off to sleep. There will be lots of snow, lots of reindeer, lots of angels, and lots and lots of fairies. Definitely. Ali Mia says, "Happy Christmas to you both. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you." <laughs> well, do you want to go then? Okay, I shall go. I'll go clean my teeth. There you go. He's gone. Bye-bye. See you Th all on Sunday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Belarusia. <laughs> I think Belarusia must have just oh, woken up. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> woken up there. <laughs> it's OK. I, I Thank you, Belarusia. <laughs> th that, can I just say that that is not the worst thing anyone has ever said to me? Well done. Not, the, not by a long, long way. <laughs> well done, Belarusia. Well done, Belarusia. <laughs> that's one less on see you the, on sunday that's one less on the streets <laughs> bye 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 steve is going now what a strange live stream and we don't have many people watching because it's very late now it's actually 25 or oh, 20 minutes away from midnight so it's time to go ali amar says don't forget to breastfeed mr steve yes of course i will be doing that yes <laughs> i've got a very big bottle full of warm milk that I give to him. <laughs> it seems to calm him down. Thank you, Jeff. We are going now. I hope you've had a good time. It's been unusual. I am back on Sunday, of course. Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. You can catch us late on a Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. UK time. So for some people, for some people, it's very early in the morning and for, for others, it's very late at night. And if you want to make a donation, you can as well. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks a lot to everyone who has got in touch. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you on Sunday. We'll have some fun, <laughs> some games and lots and lots of Mr. Steve as well. Also, if you want to send me an email, you can. Yes, my email address is now going across the screen. You are more than welcome to send something. And once again, I get lots and lots and lots of messages of all sorts being sent to me. So if you want to say hello, if you'd like to send maybe a picture of your Christmas tree, you are more than welcome to do so. You are more than welcome to do that. It's time to go. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a little different. And of course, I'm back on Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. And of course, until the next time we meet here on the Internet. Ta-ta for now.